right. So, money, we got these things in the sense. It's going to be some foam going to spray down on us. Oh, so Lord. Yes, okay. Yeah, all, right. all right. So, so on three, just, just throw your hands up because it's going to look like we lit. All right. Okay. The camera going to catch you. Ready? You got the button press? Ready? So, on three, just throw our hands back. All right. Uh, you going to count it down, buddy? Yeah. Why y'all made me do it? I knew y'all. I knew it. I knew it. Y'all play too much, man. Uh, I thought it it was like AI augmented. Yeah. Nah, just because I know you. Y'all playing too early in the morning. I know morning. you needed your coffee, and I need it too. So you know what. <laughs> And he went down. I ain't even tell him. He played too much. I do. I'm up here looking. Y'all know silly. what it is, man. Young Jack in the streets morning. Take over Miss Shanika. Shout it, shout it, man. This morning we got a special uh, a special guest in the building. Um, You know what? Listen, man. If grinding was a, a person, if long legs and I don't care about it was a person, if if being a Grammy Award winner for being a, for having the best R&B uh, performance was a whole vibe in the building, I'm talking about multi-platinum uh, songstress, writer, definition of talented artist. Ladies and gentlemen, in the building. With us this morning, we have the one and only Money Lord. Yes, yeah. Hell yeah. I'm here. We done broke the ice early this morning. You threw they your hands up. They got me here looking crazy doing silly stuff. You don't look crazy. How <laughs> you look crazy? You I, look I, cool. They made you cool. do something that was a little crazy. It really I'm going to watch crazy. the footage back. It's going to look cool when you see it because yeah. your people got the footage. Look. Okay. Like you was on a roller coaster. Yeah, like I am. Life here. is a roller coaster. It True sure indeed. is. Let's talk about this roller coaster yep. of a life too, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That wake up juice. Yeah, Damn. I need. I need this. <laughs> it's literally like I don't have a choice. I'm running on fumes. They've been working me so hard while I've been in the A. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm. Um. I don't really go outside. Like I'm. You know. I work so hard that when in my house is so comfortable. Um. You know. I like to just be in the bed watching my Netflix and. You like the Netflix and chill, chill for I real. I really, for real. really, really do. I love to sleep. Um, so this, this week has been like, where are we going? What are we doing? Okay. Who is that? It's real. Yeah. It's been a, it's been a whirlwind. So let's talk about it. Um, one of your, probably your most popular, uh, known hit record, because we know that you're a writer, an established writer at that, your hours and hours record. I remember hearing this record for the first time and I just was like, who is this voice? Who is this voice? And I kept hearing and hearing and it got to the point where. Even if you are in a hip hop club, if you was in a dance hall spot, hell, even after church, I'm hearing your music everywhere. And when it come on, people singing this song. I really yeah. had like people was out and about when it first, like literally. But I remember saying, during it, the pandemic, all these reels and yeah. every. That's how yeah. I really learned yeah. about reels. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All you see in the women was playing hours and hours, and we're like, who is this? Yeah. yeah. You but Atlanta was still open, though. We was open. I'm not even close. We was open. We was I mean. open, but I a lot of the, people didn't choose to partake. Well, I was <laughs> I was outside every day. Y'all well, I was fired, so I ain't had nowhere to be. Exactly. That's one thing that, I mean, I wish, <laughs> in hindsight, I wish that I was outside a little more because I would have loved to experience that um, in real time. And just the energy, I mean, I felt it watching the clips back when people would be in the club, and apparently, you know, it's really hard to get a ballad in the club. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. and have, it's kind of like... Um, That's why I said that. Tevin Campbell, can we talk, like, whenever they play that, everybody is going to sing it. So I would have loved to have experienced that um, firsthand and in person. And I honestly don't know if I realized, like, the impact that the song was having at the time, you know, because mm-hmm. I didn't see it in person. You couldn't experience it at that time. I didn't experience it. I did not know the energy. We talked about it. We talked about it because that record was so big and is so it's a great record still to this day. Thank you. And I, I I did say that because I was just like, man, I was here, of course, seeing your story. Um, and of course, it made me start to read more about you. And I was like, oh, I ain't know she did all these different things. And then I was like, dang, man, I hate that she it was you and a few other people who couldn't really get out and see what it's like to have this 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 baby, this thing that you've created and it's, uh, it's taking over and you can't even get outside with it and just feel it. I felt bad a lot of days for you for that. So how did it get on like the reels and TikToks? Um, 
you know, I, I want to be careful about how I say this, but I think in the beginning, <clears throat> it is spelled H R S H R S. So, lesbian talk took it and owned it as like a sapphic love song. Because if you notice, I don't say any gender mm. in the song. Um, it's just a song just about feelings and, you know, sharing your space with the person that you care about. And so everybody swore it was a sapphic love song. And then it didn't help that my friend Breezy from All American, mm -hmm. uh, Coop, she posted a video of her and her fiance, um, yep. like, you know, pictures of them together and videos and things. And everybody thought it was me. Wow. In the, so they thought I was Chris. Oh. Um, and so they took that and ran with it. And then other couples started doing it. Then it turned into dance. People started doing it. Then it turned into musicians, you know, playing it. Then singers. And then it was just like, then cooking videos, then hair videos, <laughs> you know, and, and then, and then it, Love it just literally exploded. And, and yeah. I was filled with water and Yeah, showers. and then I was like reposting them. Then when them dudes and, started reposting and I just doing one. stuff with I knew, I was like, oh, she's You know, the, the one that when I started, when I knew, um, you remember that boy that used to get beat up by his girlfriend? Don't you love when I come yeah. around? Yeah. He sang it on his social media. And then it was like, you know, everybody was using it. Their little skits. Kids sending me <laughs> videos singing it. And then in turn, that song, the, the traffic from that song started blowing up another song of mine online um, called Time Machine mm -hmm. on TikTok. And I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like, so it's it everywhere. just happened like right before your eyes. You in, made in great six song. days. Wow. wow. Six days is all it that's took. That's incredible. Yeah, six so days. that's the power of the internet when, and you when was everybody, in the at the time, right? Yep. When everybody collectively says yes to something, it's such a powerful I wish we could do that with like everything, you know, things that actually matter. So was that the route? Was that the original uh plan to go to route or it just took its own leg um i think I, I have been resistant to tiktok for a while because the barrier to entry is so crazy if you don't know how to use it mm -hmm. it could be very intimidating so for a long time i just kind of just watched and waited and i was putting out music i started the money long journey in january 2020 here in atlanta and i worked on my first couple projects put them out um that later that year in like june so this was on my third ep that I had uh, wow. put hours and hours on. And we didn't have any particular strategy. Um, my team was like, you need to be authentic. You need to just wake up with your bonnet. And I was like, it's not giving that. I'm not doing it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I got to figure, figure, figure out how to do it and be comfortable and be myself. Right, yeah. I just don't, I wouldn't go outside like that. So I'm not going to go Perfect. on internet like that. Right. I, you know. Um, so when I finally figured out how I could use TikTok and still be myself and not have to go into no character or whatever. Um, I literally just organically like will record something and not even think about it. And then people will be like, oh my God, you're so funny. I'm like, well, I'm not telling any jokes. I'm just being myself. <laughs> okay. um, and then, I mean, this is the thing that about social so media. <laughs> I'm not, people say I'm funny, but I'll be like, I'm not telling no jokes. Um, but that's the thing about social media is like, it's not really up to you. You just have to express and then people will choose what they want to, you know, digest or ingest. And it's not, you know, trying to go viral. People can sniff that out. You can see it. It's very easy to tell. Um, and so no, to answer your question, it was a long way of saying, no, I didn't have any strategy. It was no plan. It was just right time, right place. Um, the lane was wide open for R and B. Like nobody was doing anything at that time. I got, no, I got a question. Now that, that you said that, okay, you get this, you know, this dream come true moment. Boom! Oh man! Not only am I writing other hit records for other people, people recognize me as my own, you know, as a viable artist. artist. Yeah. Um, what happens in your writing process and your creative process now when you write for other people? Like, if you come across a vibe, you'd be like, yeah, I don't want to share this. I'm going to keep this for myself. Because that, does that get difficult for you at times? No, I am I'm I can't focus on more than one thing at once. Because mm -hmm. um, I start messing up and I get like, I start kind of glitching. And so 
Glitch King. Glitch King. <laughs> yeah. Glitch McConnell. <laughs> like, yeah. That's him. Yeah. yeah. So then you can relate. Yeah. Um, I wrote songs for other people for 12 years. Mm-hmm. When I was in the service position, I enjoyed helping other people, you know, bring their stories and, and their experiences to life in song form. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm not, and I never gave someone or... I don't like to say gave, but like I never wrote anyone a song that I didn't think that it should be theirs. Like okay. I didn't want it, okay. I, you know, okay. but and I always wrote as an artist because mm-hmm. I'm an artist first. Um, but now I don't write for other people anymore. I mean, I'm not saying that I never will. But right now I'm just really focused on me. It's like I spend a lot of time serving others, it's, you know. It's okay for me to take a little time. No, definitely. So now with this attention that you've garnered, right? (laughs) Um, How do you navigate this whole social media, internet world as far as being an artist and being open to what others have to say about you? Um, Well, first of all, I, I don't care what other people think about me which can be good and bad right because i'm very honest open vulnerable um i'm just me and i don't care like i don't care to try to code switch or you know sometimes i'll zone out and like but i can go through the motions and i know how to you know be um in certain spaces but for the most part i'm just myself Mm. and i would rather not uh, post or like go live or things like that if I can't just be my 100% yeah. me yeah. and then I know that um, everybody's perspective is based on or er- I guess everybody's expression is based on their perspective mm. so there's a lot of negativity and people really enjoy arguing with each other and getting mad over small misunderstanding or you said it's like I don't got time for none of that. I really don't. Y'all can have it. You won. And so I don't really um, fit in with the current culture of things. Like, mm-hmm. I may or may not, like, leave a comment under the shade room or things like that. Um, but I don't, I, I have to figure out, like I said about the TikTok, I have to figure out what my voice is because I don't like all the negativity and, and back mm-hmm. and forth and stuff like that. I just be like, okay, and what are you going to do about it? <laughs> you know, okay, you you're, you're yeah. is bad. no, not even. I mean, all humans are emotional. We all but are, yeah. I, just, I think like if there's a problem, we know why we need to argue about it. What are you gonna do about it? What are we doing? Exactly. Are we gonna fix it? You just want to talk. Like Most you know, people just want to. You want dialogue? You want some dialogue? Yes. I feel you. Straight up. Yeah. All right. So you have some new music. I do. And let's talk about it. This EP that you have. Mm-hmm. Four tracks. Yes. What's going on? Um, so I've been working really hard on this second look, I guess. Um, I'm really kind of counting it as my first real album. Um, cause the last one was just three EPs that I put together to make an album. And so this one is more intentional where it's like there's specific sounds I'm choosing, um, specific topics that I'm going to talk about, trying to explore my vocal abilities a bit more. And, um, you know, I was struggling with some respiratory issues in the last few years and so just learning how to use my voice again in a big way and the instruments that i'm choosing just being a lot more musical um doing things from scratch versus just picking beats because like i found the hours and hours beat on youtube Mm. so you know just want to get a little bit more into the musical bag and um the song made for me is obviously another love song I'm, i'm a lover i really like i like it Thank you. I, I think like we it. need just more love. Like, Yo. where yeah. where is the singing in the rain, falling on your knees, R and B? They like, don't do on. that. Yeah. No That's more. what we want. Why y'all stop singing in the rain? Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, you know the music controls. The <laughs> Why narrative. y'all stop? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so they're in control of the narrative. They don't want love on the streets. Yeah, I'm tired of getting you know rained on and 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 cut off and. You know, like I wanna, I wanna get down on one knee, propose to me, take your shirt off, cry in the rain. Yes. That's what I wanna see. Yeah, yeah. That you, you wanna, you wanna marry out of college. You know, just young love. People, the way that we look at relationships today is <laughs> so crazy. 
Well, I wouldn't recommend getting married young. Have your fun while you Thank can. you. But um, I have I have been married for eight years, and I will say when you hey. find that person, you know, definitely it's not going to be easy, but, um, you know, definitely grind it out the rest of your life with the person that is made for you. <laughs> See I what think, I did there? I yeah. think it's hard for a lot of people to navigate these different spaces because where your life is two years ago, you weren't in that same place so for people to be able to grow with you through these life experiences i think it's a lot harder than you know it sounds for so, people so to de- definitely sometimes i wish i could have been popping in an era where you didn't have to do all this mm-hmm. where you can just like pop out when you pop out but also at the same time the connection that i have with a lot of my audience is like when i see them out i'll be like hey friend you know you know it's yeah. like i really do have um, relationship with my consumer base. Okay. Well, speaking of your consumer base, the new single, yes. Made For Me, you're talking about your significant other, you being married for eight years, so I'm pretty sure that was a change or a rift in lifestyle. Uh, well, I'm not sure. I said I'm pretty sure. I'll let me take that back because <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. When this change came about, was it easier in your relationship? Did it make things harder? Was that a significant change? Um... Well, because he was there throughout, you know, the whole process. There, It wasn't like a, a strain on us or anything. Um, I think we just, we're regular people, you know, so we have the, the, the normal relationship. I mean, if you've been in a long-term relationship, you yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, we have, we just. What I'm saying, was there any, every time those moments where y'all looking at each other like, you know, I can't believe like this is happening like this. To this magnitude. Um, we had a couple, like, when I was, I went home for Christmas when as the song was blowing up. And one of the moments that I really knew, like, oh, this is really happening. Um, we had went to get some food. And we were driving back to my mom's house. And I heard the song playing. And I'm, like, checking my phone. I'm looking at the radio. Like, where is that coming from? And it was the car next to us was blasting it um mm. and she was going in you could just see her finger just going and i was like yo yeah. that's crazy and it was in my hometown mm. so it just hit different you know it was like i could see if it was you know in la or something yeah. like that but it was in my hometown um yeah so that was a moment that we both were like that's crazy you know especially knowing like everything is self-funded where you know i directed the videos i stopped myself did my own makeup, did my own hair, you know, casted the videos, casted. I did everything. Yes. Why did not? Why did not know this? I mean, are, you, are we withholding this for like this tell all or the the biopic or something? I definitely do have a lot of footage, but no, I just I don't look at it as something that I need to like. It's all the greatest though. artists that I look up to, uh, they all did it like that. It's just what you do when you really want mm-hmm, something. It's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you know, you you make it happen. We back at it, young Jack in the streets morning. Take over that new uh, made for me out right now. Money long. She's live with us in the studio. She had to let y'all hear, man. She wanted to hand deliver it to us today, man. I'm definitely loving the record. And you yeah. collab with some giants. Yeah, JD, Jermaine Dupree, Brian Michael Cox. That's, That's what's, what's up. up. Mm-hmm. You also got uh, two other features on the new EP as well. The album. I'm sorry. You also have two more features on your album. Care to talk about it? Um. On the new project coming up, I actually don't have any new features, but this I did work with some amazing women on the album. Okay. PDA. Yes. Okay. So you can, I mean, listen, there's always people f- finding out about Money Long every day that didn't know that Hours and Hours was my song. May or may not have heard it. So the music is old to us, but it's new to everybody else. Right. Um, and so please go and check out my album, Public Displays of Affection. Right. Um, I'll, re- I'll be releasing new music. A uh, new EP and then another full project later on at the top of next year. But I'm always down to collaborate with, especially Black women. Um, I feel you know I, I want to go back to the time when artists like cameo in each other's videos, yes. you know, pop up in the studio, yeah. maybe do an intro or an interlude. Like we need to get back to that. So that's what I'm trying to do. That's what's up, man. Bring the love back. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, man. It's definitely great to have you here this morning, man. Uh, much love, much success. Let us know when the tour coming. Make sure you stop back by. Anything you got going on, you're always welcome here, man. That's we, right. But we, uh, possibly soon you're going to be performing at BET Hip Hop. 
Um, I'm not doing BT hip hop, okay. but you know, anytime yo BT call me, anytime y'all want me to mm. perform, I love being on that stage. I'm going to DC this week to perform at the Kennedy Center oh. with D Nice mm. okay. uh, Club Quarantine Live. So that's gonna be fun. I'm gonna be singing the new song, and uh, yeah, maybe a tour coming soon. Yeah, make sure you just we keep us in the know. We can see that. Definitely we want to see, see that. I got to make sure y'all get tickets come out. And, and then I want, I want, you know, make sure I hit your management. I want you to get that 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 fair, organic shot that you, you know, what I'm saying. That's for, when I say shot, not like you're not on. I'm saying just to, because they talking about this pandemic, like it's gonna come back. I'm scared. I want. Mm. Like, we can't have a part too, and you, you know what I'm saying. You know, it's so much. I mean, I think that's part of the reason why my music is doing so well is because there's so much craziness happening in the world we all just need love yes and like you know all this government shut down like all it's like it's a lot it's so much stuff in our personal lives already and then on top of that it's just like you know drama 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 war flood you know yes. bad news every day so hopefully when people listen to my music i can at least help Take them away for that for three minutes. I love that. Oh, right. yeah. yeah, I love that. That's and that's what music is supposed to do, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen. Again, want to say thank you for uh, being here this morning. Uh, the one and only Money Long. Money yeah. Long. Yeah. So make sure y'all stick around for more Young Jack in the Streets Morning Takeover.